So once again very good day to everybody. This is technological innovation and new media and in this class we discuss about actually last class we actually discussed about 3G networks. In this class we will discuss about 4G networks, about uh, LTE long term evolution and then about IMS. So this is especially for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at dr.kristranand at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session once again let me thank God for giving this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national international participants students and young researchers. In this class we start out with an introduction to the 4G long term evolution. We discuss about the advantages and disadvantages. Then we go through the evolution of various technologies okay the 4G LTE features. Then Volt which is nothing but voice over LTE. Then we discuss 4G LTE for the internet of things and how fast is Wi-Fi. We discuss about IMS world architecture, then we discuss about user equipment, ISIM, EPC, uh, phone uh, data network, GW and then PC RF. Okay. Then we discuss about call session control function, CSCF. Then we discuss about media gateway control function, MGCF. So I had already given the enumerated work for you, please complete them at your best available time. I will be checking them. And at regular intervals, I will be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics. So this is a short introduction actually like uh, in 2020 when this brought into, okay, like uh, LTE was very famous. And uh, because just because that uh, 4G smartphones were using this one, so everybody were into LTE. Actually when you compare uh, 3GPP, uh, third generation partnership project with the fourth uh, generation or uh, maybe um, you know the RNS radio network controller we had several features but still 4G LTE was much more popular okay so definitely it is, it is having high speed data network event we were actually providing fast wireless networks for the smartphones as well as mobile devices right so here it is going to support packet switching not the circuit switching technique okay so here high amount of data is being transferred between the center and the receiver and definitely the data exchange occurs with the very less power consumption which means that you are going to preserve you are going to save the smartphone batteries and definitely the, the speed of the uh, file upload or maybe download will be much more higher okay and uh, here it is going to release the network usage much faster and it is going to decrease the load on the network so here uh, that's another uh, another advantage of LTE is that it is going to decrease the traffic also there will be less more much more uh, less collisions even okay so maybe like live shows matches events streaming everything can be made possible with LTE with much more advantages and the latency and maybe the encryption okay the privacy that it will offer will be through the 128 bit keys okay so, but the disadvantage is it is not available in all cities, okay, and also like more uh, fresh technologies has to be developed in order to transmit better signals in the buses or maybe trains if you have to provide Wi-Fi, okay. So, LTE is uh, much complex, like uh, it can be used only by the skilled people, okay, and uh, definitely they should be paid with more salary even, okay. So, definitely like uh, uh, the technology can be used in the older versions of the smartphones even and buying these smartphones would be much, much costly. So this is the evolution of technologies. First we started off with 1G that is during 1980s. So which means that you can talk through the mobile phones. Then came 2G where you developed uh, uh, SMS as well as roaming support during 1990s. Then 3G came in 2000s. Okay, So there was some mobile internet experience. Then afterwards 4G came during 2010 that was faster internet experience and then came 5G with a super fast internet experience. Okay. So as I told in the last class about 3GPP, third generation partnership project that has uh, developed and definitely it paved the way for the LTE high speed wireless technology. Okay. So here the 3GGP uh, unites the telecom standard development organization so that everybody can e have equal access, can have the same access to the technology. So we can confidently say that uh, 4G long term evolution is a global success. And you can say by January 2022, 66 percentage of the mobile users have been using 4G LTE. Okay, so which means that it had around like 6.6 .6 billion subscriptions, like uh, 
uh, the, what we enjoy, what we enhance with this global mobile suppliers associations. So currently, uh, the statistics says that there are 791 telecom operators who are running this LTE. Okay, that is across the 240 developed countries, also the union territories in and around the globe. Also, 336 have rolled out LTE advanced networks, and 227 have initiated the world networks. Okay, so which means that it's a uh, uh, currently like everybody are using the cell phone and uh, we are also enjoying much more features the one advantage major advantage of this LTE okay 4G LTE is all about all internet protocol flat network structure okay which means that it can be used for mobile it can be used for fixed and also it can be portable movable also with the case of broadband access and definitely for the lower latency uh, like uh, the time taken uh, to travel across the network it is, it is taking much lesser time even and of course uh, for the increased bandwidth uh, your 4G LTE works better so you can uh, even say like uh, it can be suitable for the IoT internet of things so here bandwidth increases up to 100 Mbps on the downlink and maybe 50 Mbps on the uplink even so which means that if we are uh, it, since it is designed for higher bandwidth okay which means that it has faster access to the content or maybe applications as well and lower latency you can use for the voice oriented services okay like time sensitive applications or maybe ip architectures you can use the 4g lte features so here you will have the user equipment radio evolved packet for epc okay so that is you are shifting the resource reservation across the internet uh, through the cross layer error control in the advanced version of LTE is voice over LTE that is nothing but volt okay so it's actually it's a improvised version of 4G LTE for the voice calls and maybe video calls okay so for example HD voice V HD video calls so that is actually possible okay so it can uh, have a better coverage also on the downside like uh, the battery is also going to drain okay and if you are going to upgrade to 4G LTE make sure that you will be having 4G volt so in the mobile also you will be seeing like 4G mode okay so around 200 million new 4G users were added two years back and of, of course uh, the traffic also got increased bandwidth also was consumed more battery life was also increased okay. so this is the LTE like we will have the policy manager uh, evolved charging we will have IMS uh, application function okay the enforcement point and through this it is being uh, transferred across the social media networks right so here the data traffic almost like 60 times it increased from uh, over, over the last five years and of course early 2021 we will have uh, the full 4g market with around 99 percentage of the 700 m mobile internet subscribers were using this 4g lte and definitely everybody were using it online okay so especially for the internet of things based devices you can use the 4g lte okay now we'll analyze how it is actually suitable for the iot okay so the thing is that we'll be using the low powered wide area network okay so that is where we have two versions one is category m okay that is machine to machine okay or the lte m and then you'll have category nb okay that is for the iot okay and the mid-range bandwidth you'll have category lte1 okay. so the, the high bandwidth applications you can use it for lte advanced or the lte advanced pro so maybe for the uh, static message uh, centric yeah. deep indoor we will be using this in all the applications and also for the mobility low latency throughput we will be using from nb iot to the cat m category m okay. So you can say that it is backward compatible as, uh, also and definitely it will offer much more flexibility even okay so maybe with a gsm cdma one wideband cdma uh, universal mobile telecommunication system or maybe cdma 2000 also it is uh, much useful and of course it is backward compatible also now we compare the wi-fi versus the lte actually it was wi-fi was actually created during 2000 and we had like wireless local uh, area network protocols okay so through the wireless router okay across the internet you are going to communicate okay so the standard is nothing but ieee 802.11 okay so this is the standard for the wi-fi okay and uh, the lte 
for the broadband unlimited range wireless uh, network technology it can be useful definitely your lte is much more advantageous okay so actually we had like versions like 802.11a 802.11b here 11b came before a okay and speed if you can see the theoretical speed everywhere they are seeing is 11 mbps but in actual it is actually 5.5 mbps only okay so here the version a will be offering 54 mbps in theoretical factor but definitely in reality actual means it is only 20 mbps so maximum range is only 10 meter uh, for the version b and 140 meter for version a but uh, version b came before version a but version a it was having a maximum range okay. and several versions have also come into like with the case of ethernet uh, wired communications or maybe uh, modem uh, across like various phone lines will be having and you can use the LOS line of sight use walls pillars tv screens so that can actually reduce the range okay. then we'll continue with ims uh, word architecture so it's uh, nothing but uh, uh, multimedia system uh, ip okay internet protocol multimedia subsystem so it's actually a standalone system okay so uh, we can connect to the pdn public data <coughs> network through the sti interface and we'll having evolve packet core will be having like three function elements like we'll have mme which is mobile management entity okay mobile or maybe mobility management entity okay so it is the it is act, acting as a central control point okay in the uh, evolve evolve packet code and for the control plane uh, functions you will be using this one and similar to mme we will be having sgw serving gateway okay so every packets okay in the uplink as well as downlink will be flowing across this serving gateway and serving gateway maybe for handling the transfers or maybe handovers you will be use, using this one and the third one is nothing but uh, public data network gateway okay so that it will be allocating the addresses to the user equipment and it will be acting as an interface between the internet and the uh, ims okay uh, media internet i mean I, ip media subsystem okay so this is the lte core network okay so we'll have this function across the world ims complement so this is the architecture diagram we'll have the user equipment you'll have e node b okay so across the evolve packet core we'll be having the 3g partnership project across the server and from the server okay we'll be going on to the public data network gateway to the internet right so then you'll have uh, like user equipment of course it's a mobile terminal that uh, you can authorize it to use in the lte network so it can use the equipment as i told in the last class it can be a smartphone or maybe tab or maybe communication device okay so here it will be having two components one is uicc universal integrated circuit card and then sap ua session initiation protocol user agent okay the uicc universal integrated circuit card okay will be uh, nothing but uh, will have like sim okay subscriber identity module that is actually used by the gsm network and then you have u sim uh, as i told in the last class umts subscriber identity module so that for the case of uh, umts or maybe lte it can be useful and then cdma sim okay so that is cdma core division multiple access subscriber identity module or maybe reusable identification module okay so specifying the identity information and then we'll have isim ip multimedia services identity module okay so for the imsi identity information that it will be used and then you will have isim okay like uh, uh, impi okay ip multimedia private identity so that is actually uh, a global identity that is being allocated by this home network and for maintaining the domain information home operators domain information it will be useful and then you will have ip multimedia public identity like the private identity you will have public identity so it will be having like telephone number and it will be a session initiation protocol universal uh, resource identifier or maybe a tel telephone URI. okay so here here you will be having rfc standard 39664 and you will be also having a secret key that is associated for the user authentication and for the session initiation protocol registration and then you will have sip user agent 
So here it will be used in the user equipment to send as well as receive the SIP messages. And for, for providing the basic telephonic uh, functionality, it will be much useful as well. Here we have two roles, one uh, user agent client, which is a client to send the SIP request. And then user agent server, okay, it is going to receive the uh, I mean, receive the request and then it will be sending a response, okay. So here you will have internet, the switch, okay, uh, across the firewall, okay, to the asterisk, to the client A, client B and client C. So client A, B, C are going to send the SIP request and then in response, the server is going to uh, respond to the request and send the response. And then you'll have EPC, Evolve Packet Code. Okay, so maybe for the world or maybe IMS, you'll be using this one. Here you'll be having PDN, Public Data Network Gateway. Okay, so that is going to allocate the IP addresses to the user equipment. So it's a point of communication between the Evolved Utra or maybe Evolved Universal Terrestrial Radio Access and maybe the non 3G partnership project, okay, like the internet. So maybe when the uh, IP multimedia subsystem is actually available, there can be more than public uh, data network gateway in the Evolve packet code, one especially for the internet and one for the, uh, you know, IMS, okay. So here you will also have policy and charging ruling uh, rule function. So here it will be uh, uh, determining the allowed traffic times in real time. Also it is going to check how you can account for that particular traffic. And here the operators is going to use this information for especially the billing purpose. So this is the IMS code. Here you will be handling the session management and media control. Okay. So from the UE, it will go to CSCF. Okay. So from there, it will go, go to the home domain. Okay. So here you will be having home subscriber service and ICSCF, SCSCF and application service. So you will be having SLF breakout gateway control function, media gateway control function and media gateway. Okay. MGW. And uh, the finally, the CSCF call session control function. Here you are going to monitor, support, and then it is going to release the multimedia sessions. So here it will be having proxy CSCF uh, the function, okay, call session control function. So here it will be start acting as the initial point of contact for any SIP user agent, okay. So it will be handling all the requests from the user equipment point of view, uh, the SIP proxy, okay, to the entire system. And then you will have serving CSCF, okay, so which means that it is having knowledge about the user and what applications are actually available to the user. So it will be acting as a decision point. So the main job is to decide whether these user SIP messages will be actually forwarded to the application servers. And then interrogating CSCF, interrogating means something related to some questions, okay. So here it will be initiating the assignment, okay, of the user to the SCSCF during the registration and then you have HSS that is actually the first part. So it is a database where you will be having user profiles and maybe the location information also. Here it will be handling the name as well as the address resolution. Okay, So uh, for the authentication, privacy or maybe authorization also you will be using HSS. Okay. And SLF subscriber location function. Okay, So here SLF is going to assign HSS to a user in the home network. And in order to achieve this uh, function, the SLF will be keeping track of all the home subscriber server. And uh, media gateway control function, here you are going to control the media gateway and you are going to convert the codec. Okay, so here it will be uh, serving as a breakout to the circuit switch network. And whenever the breakout occurs means it will be responsible for managing the conversion of the signaling messages and also for converting the SIP messages to the bearer independent call control okay also for isdn user port protocols used in the legacy system so here you will be having ipp isdn gateway you will be having the signaling signaling gateway media gateway controller and the media gateway across the uh, rtp okay. 